The geological history is one of the most interesting aspects of our planet, ranging from tectonic plates drifting across the asthenosphere to the great glaciers and ice caps covering much of the world's terrain. One place where the geological history is particularly interesting is Newton, Massachusetts. In order to fully understand how Newton became the way it is today, we need to take a look at the big picture. Newton, Massachusetts is part of the Boston Basin, so its early geological history is nearly identical to other places in the area. Over time, the surface of Earth has changed, and the continents themselves have drifted across Earth's surface because of plate tectonics. Scientists have hypothesized that around 514 million years ago, the face of the Earth closely resembled this. Now look at the area near the bottom right of this image, at a place called Gondwana. Approximately 570 million years ago, a subduction zone was created along the northwest border of Gondwana, resulting in serious volcanic activity. Some of this activity took place offshore and created a series of volcanic island arcs, one of which was named Avalon, and it experienced serious rifting and faulting, creating an area which would later become known as the Boston Rift Basin. In addition, some of the rifts that opened up were filled with sediments. Through the processes of sedimentation and compaction, these sediments were turned into rocks such as Roxbury Conglomerate and Cambridge Argolite, which are scattered throughout Newton today. At the time this image displays, Avalon had began to separate from Gondwana and head toward a new position. 250 million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea coalesced, and Avalon was squashed between Baltica and Africa on one side and North America on the other. 50 million years later, Pangaea pulled apart and lots of rifting occurred. All over eastern Massachusetts, lava flows seeped through cracks to the surface, creating igneous rock intrusions. Named for the Laurentian Mountains of Quebec, the Laurentide Ice Sheet first began to form 75,000 years ago through the accumulation, compaction, and recrystallization of snow. 50,000 years later, the glacier made its first advance into Massachusetts during a period of prolonged cooling climate, heading from the northwest to southeast. During this time, the Laurentide Ice Sheet towered at 2.5 to 3 kilometers in certain areas. The glacier created a rolling landscape filled with moraines, caves, kettle lakes, drumlins, and most commonly, an unstratified mixture of sand, gravel, boulders, and clay, called till. Between 25,000 and 18,000 years ago, the glacier retreated and advanced periodically over Massachusetts. Finally, about 18,000 years ago, the glacier began its final retreat. The first stop on our journey to Newton was in the woods by Newton South High School. There are many loose rocks and rock outcrops in the area. The rocks found near these outcrops are mostly felsic, which has a high silica content. Since greater amounts of silica are found primarily in stratovolcanoes, a likely source for the igneous rocks was the stratovolcano. The loose rocks we found were identifiable as granite and rhyolite. We identified the granite because of its color scheme, mostly white with some black and orange stripes scattered throughout. The rhyolite was identified by its light, felsic color, as well as its fine grained texture. Then, in the larger outcroppings, we observed the presence of some pumice embedded in the rock. The most apparent characteristic we used to identify the pumice was its frothy texture, created when gases escape from a rock just after an eruption. This further supports a stratovolcano formation, because pumice forms primarily from the explosive eruptions and viscous lava commonly associated with stratovolcanoes. The next stop on our journey was to Ober Road on Oak Hill. When we arrived, it became apparent that this hill had one gradually sloping side, and on the opposite side, a steeper slope. Because of this particular appearance, it became apparent that this feature must be one of two things, a drumlin or a roche montanay. To deduce which one it was, we had to take a closer look. At the top of the hill, we found an outcrop which had sandy till. Whilst Roche Montanais form from bedrock, the drumlin is composed largely of sandy material, which is consistent with what we observed. Furthermore, if the feature was a Roche Montanais, striations in the rock would likely be visible, but we could not find any. A drumlin is an asymmetrical hill, which has a long, gradual slope on one side and a steeper fall on the other. These form when a glacier acts like a bulldozer, accumulating sandy material at its snout. Then, the glacier slides over this accumulation, first forming a steep side, and then gradually gliding down until, once again, it reaches a normal surface. 
Thus, the steeper side points towards where the glacier came from, and the more gradual one to where it advanced. Near the Chestnut Hill Mall lies Hammond Pond Reservation, a pathway surrounded by Hammond Pond itself on one side and a series of steep cliffs on the other. This location is one of the most obvious locations for observing both glacial features and different types of weathering. This location is also great for observing the natural bedrock of the area, Roxbury Conglomerate. As you can see, giant outcrops of Roxbury Conglomerate are visible all throughout the reservation. The conglomerate is, for the most part, well-rounded, indicating that it has traveled far from its place of origin. We believe that this conglomerate did not originate as a glacial deposit due to the fact that the Laurentide Ice Sheet first advanced across Massachusetts 50,000 years ago, whereas the sediment that forms the bedrock is dated to be 350 to 400 million years of age. Rather, most of the conglomerate formed as sediment that was deposited at the base of mountains by streams, which washed sediment from high mountains out to the ocean. Although the bedrock is not made of glacial deposits, it is clear that glaciers have passed through the area. This erratic is a good example of that, dropped during the retreat of a glacier. Here you can see a prime example of root wedging, a mechanical weathering process that splits rocks in half. Near the intersection between Beacon Street and Bishopsgate Road lies a series of intriguing sandstone cliffs. As you can see, the layers have a very wavy-like appearance to them, with the different layers running parallel to each other. This is most likely due to a slump occurring in the sandstone, while it was still soft. The Webster Conservation Area is a jackpot of geological formations. The rocks present at this location are mostly sandstone ledges, alternating with Roxbury conglomerate. We also found an abundance of tree root wedging. We also found evidence of jointing. When pressure is removed from a rock, it expands, causing it to crack, creating joints. In the future, if more jointing were to occur, and in the form of sheeting, where the joints are parallel to the ground, then an entire layer of the rock would fall off, creating an exfoliation dome. It is obvious that the Newton we know today was shaped by events that are far in the past. When Avalon was first created, it helped set a series of events in motion that forever changed the face of the Earth. And when the Laurentide Ice Sheet made its first advance into Massachusetts, it clearly affected the land that nearly 100,000 people today call home. Even though not all the pieces of the past remain as they once were, the processes that have affected them over time are themselves just as fascinating. This project has given us valuable insight on how powerful the influence of the past is on the present. Thus, by looking at pieces of evidence left behind today, it is possible to know the events that happened millions of years ago. Thank you.